أتاني مرة نزق ليسألني بما دنت فقلت له أنا رجل أحب الله يا أنت أتسأل كيف من هاجي أما بالحق آمنت عباد الله إخواني فكن منهم إذا شئت وكن معنا على حذر من التفريق إن صنت إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونعوذ بك من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات عمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مذل له ومن يذل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد ان الاصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار I bear witness there's no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may peace and blessings be upon him and also salutations upon him and at the same time we also send our peace and blessings upon Muhammad upon the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala wajma'een and today I want to talk about an important topic and something that happened to me yesterday actually I wanted to speak about something else that I've been thinking for a long time but what happened to me yesterday in the car park has really enabled me to talk about this and I do think it's in line with what's happened recently the events and everything and you know the way I look and the way I dress I often get looked upon by people in a very derogatory way and yesterday and this is something not new to me don't think that it only happens to me it only happened to me yesterday I mean when I lived in Mount Druid and I always say this uh, the best city in Sydney if you want to find a place is Mount Druid and uh, when I used to live over there I was called Bin Laden many times. I mean, yesterday in Stanhope Gardens, someone actually called me Bin Laden. And you know what? I was in that mood at that time, and I said to him, that's not me, but that's my uncle. You don't want to mess with the nephew of Bin Laden. <laughs> and really, I thought to myself, you know what? We have to really stand up. And the man just looked at me. I said to him, that's not me, but that's my uncle. You don't want to mess with the nephew of Bin Laden. So really, what I'm trying to say over here, that we have to stand up for ourselves. And you know, I felt very proud. I felt like I was the king of the world at that time when I said it. Because that man had no words after that. He just looked at me and he just started mumbling in his mouth. He had nothing to say after that. And you know what? And I want to talk about this because we are affected by that. Not sure about most of you, but definitely some of us are definitely affected by that because we have that skin color that makes us the target on a daily basis. And I did my research today, which I always do, and I went on ADL. ADL is a website that talks about stopping racism and I encourage everyone to actually look at this website and today I want to read the definition of white supremacy I mean what this is I mean I looked at many dictionaries but I wasn't really sufficed by what other people were saying so I actually went on ADL and I actually read what it really means and I want to share with you 
So the first, they have four layers of the definition. So the first layer is, why it should have dominance of people of all colors, dominance over people of all colors, all races, and all backgrounds. That's the first layer. I was like, yeah, that sounds all right. But then you go into the next layer. It says, white should only live among themselves. And no one is allowed to live with them. I said, okay, that's fine with me. And then, because you know, really it's fine with me, and I'll be honest, you know, if I lived with them, they will have a lot of problem understanding my parents because they don't know any word of English, trust me. So, number three was why culture is a superior culture over others and it will stay the same way and we have to strive to make it superior every day. And then comes the last one. I mean, the last one's very uh, uh, disturbing. Why? Because some people, when they read the last one, they take law in their hands. And that's what happened two weeks ago on a Friday when people read that. One of those lunatics who actually had been reading it or writing it, and he took the law in his hand. So what's the last one? The last one is, we are in a danger of extinction. And our race is dying out. So we should work hard in order to make sure that our race stays and we stay superior. And these are no, not my words at all. I mean, if you think these are my words, I encourage you to go to ADL, the website, and it's had four layers of definition. And it all started yesterday. Trust me, I have been abused and being called so many names, and I just smiled. But yesterday, I don't know what happened to me. I just turned around and I said that. And I, it was a million dollar face of that man. I wanted to take a snap of him. I wanted to go and say, tell him, can I have a selfie with you? Because I think, and I believe, and I, we all have been suffering with that for many years. I mean, again, the way I look, it doesn't really help me as well. But at the same time, I believe, as you guys were shown that maybe a bulk of you were here, actually most of you were here, it talks uh, about how the Muslims were the first ones to come here. And when the next time someone says to you to go back to your country, you know what the best answer is? And I think the Sheikh didn't give the answer, and I'll give you the answer. You tell him, you know what, let's go together. Emirates has 150 connections to the world. We're both are gonna get back to our country. Emirates has 150 connections to different parts of the world. But the man who's telling you that he, uh, well, I need to go back to the country, let him also know that Emirates flies back to UK as well. So you can also go back to UK. And it's a direct flight. Really, I mean, that's the answer. Well, that's what the Sheikh was telling. Everyone is an immigrant. Either you're an Aboriginal, which means you're original, and if you're not original, then you're definitely someone who's an immigrant. So we need to understand this and we need to break this barrier. And in our religion as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah is saying to me and you, that Allah actually you know, honored us, no matter who you are. Let me tell you, in our literature, God actually created Adam from this dust that was from all different kinds. The sand which was red, the sand which was white, and the sand which was black as well. And that's why we all came. And did you know that the ones who say that white is superior, let me break your bubble. I mean, Adam was not white. And that's your grandfather and my grandfather. He wasn't white. Unless you say ape was your grandfather, I don't know if apes are white or not, according to science, I've really not studied about them, but Adam, I tell you that, Adam's not white, he wasn't white. Yes, his, his wife was the most beautiful lady. Hawa 
was white and she was one of the most beautiful ladies. The hadith mentions that. So really, now let's talk about how we deal with ourselves. You know, we have racism which is prevalent in us. And then we're very, uh, you know, very hasty to talk about others. It happens in the playground. It happens in the classroom. When you pick on a kid and you call him Pablo, and you carry on calling him that the whole day, and that kid's got no refuge to go. Because you have just shunned him, and being a Muslim, you were the ones who were to protect his integrity, and you were the ones to honor him. But then we are the ones who call people names. And we, and let, let me tell you another thing. I mean, from the hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says, Inna Rabbakum Wahid, that your Lord is one. Wa inna aba'ukum Wahid. And then your father is one as well. All of you, your father is one, and your God is one. So how come we have that racism or that superiority complex that we have within us? That when we speak about our race in order to... And then the hadith carries on. The hadith says that an Arab is not better than a non-Arab. And a non-Arab is not better than an Arab. And it also goes on. A white is not better than a black. And it goes on. A black is not better than a white. And then Rasulullah sallallahu says that haven't I taught you everything? Didn't I convey the whole message to you? This was the last sermon. Now let me tell you one thing. You know what? When Omar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an sent the expedition to Egypt. I have a lot of Egyptian brothers and sisters over here. When he sent this expedition to Egypt, you know the general, the leader of the army was black. Obada ibn Thamit radiallahu anhu. Remember this name, always. His color was dark. And when the king of Egypt heard that, he said he will not talk to a black person. He said he's not going to talk to a black person. He's, not going to, he's got nothing to do with it. And he, fe he fears that if he went and spoke to him, he might be infected by him. And then the Sahaba explained him that this is the best person amongst us. And if you're not going to talk to him, we might as well, you know what, we are still coming in. And so you, we will make you talk to him. And eventually he agreed to talk to him. In our stories, Rasulullah was finishing eradicating racism. Everyone knows who Bilal is, right? I give you a hadith for you to understand. Rasulullah said to Bilal, I heard your footsteps before me in Jannah. What did he say? Bilal, I heard your footsteps before me in Jannah. That's a prophet saying that. The society of Mecca was infested with racism. If you were dark, you were a slave. You had no say. You lived in slavery. If you had no lineage, you were a slave. If you didn't come from the big clans, Banu Umayyah, and all the other clans, you were a slave. And that's what it was. And today, we are doing the same. And when you look at us, we, we are doing the same. And it happens in the playground. As I said, it happens in the classroom. How many times you brag on about your, you know, about your lineage, about the place you come from, and you put the others down. Remember what did the Sheikh say yesterday? He said, you were only created into different groups. Why? So you could know each other. You could know each other. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to you so you can know each other. That was one of the main purposes. And then Allah says in the same ayah, the best amongst you is not the one who comes from the best lineage or has the most whitest color. The best among you is the one who is more close to Allah, who fears Allah and who loves Allah. And that's the best amongst us. How many times we've destroyed people, bullying them, and then we'll call them dark skin. And if someone cannot speak, we even may, we go further. If someone speaks with an accent, we call them Indian, call them Pakistani, call them the Arab accent. We go even further, you know, the accents, we make fun of the accents. And we're not proud. And if someone speaks like we with an accent, we, we just don't want to talk to them. Now imagine if I, you know, anyone, this is from Allah, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you. Imagine if you were born in Pakistan. And then you came up here. And you talk like me. Then it's not going to be very, I mean, everyone's going to be laughing. I mean, look at his accent. He doesn't even know how to talk. <laughs> and so really, this is not how, what Allah actually wanted us to do. Allah made us for a bigger purpose. I mean, I'm lucky I ended up on a plane, on a visit visa. You know what, want to know my story? I wasn't even an immigrant. My family was going for a visit visa, on a visit visa, my uncle called me, come to UK, uh, eventually you might become a citizen, and which we did. Eventually we became a citizen. But we lived 80 years in refuge, no rights whatsoever, going to school, no rights, nothing, no social security, no doll, nothing. Yeah, eventually when amnesty came, thanks to the Queen, she colored me from green to maroon. And so this is what it is. If I did not go there, if I was in Pakistan, I probably would be speaking like that. But it doesn't make me a better person. My color does not make me a better person. It's my character. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So next time when you see someone, you don't judge him by his face, or by his accent, or by his country, or by his race. You judge him by his character. And it's very important. You know, some of you probably actually don't know this, but there is a religion that was made in America, and it was called Nation of Islam. You know, something really amazing happened in this religion. Something amazing happened in this religion in 1975. Remember that date. Prior to 1975, this religion believed that God was black and devils, was, and devils were white. Because the persecution that the black Americans went through, they created a religion in the name of Islam, saying that all white people are devil. And Malcolm X, you all know him. Wallahi, I tell you that. Malcolm X, everyone loves him. If today, Malcolm X came to our school, or our masjid, let's say our masjid, and if he said he wants to become the director of board, we're, we're the first ones are gonna say, you know what, Malcolm, you know, we're mates, you know, but you're, you're black, you know, you're not gonna fit. You know, we're not, we, we can't make you the leader. Yeah, you can come to the masjid, you can pray, but you can't be the president. I mean, it has to be from my country, Pakistan. I mean, the, the, you really can't be there, but we love you, don't get me wrong. But we love you, but you can't be over here. You can't take the leadership. And you know what Malcolm X actually write, uh, writes about Wallace Muhammad. You know what, what Wallace Muhammad did? I'm not saying Nation of Islam is right, don't get me wrong. But what in 1975 Wallace Muhammad did? He said, devils are not white. Everyone can join Nation of Islam. So he made that great change which attracted a lot of people. And they started coming to this faith, Nation of Islam. And they've got a big number of Americans, and especially black Americans, who are part of this force. A lot of you probably don't even know, Malcolm X was a minister of Nation of Islam for over 15 years. 
Muhammad Ali was a Muslim of Nation of Islam for most of his life. All these great guys, before they came to the actual Islam, they all started from Nation of Islam. اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين. I want you to listen to this hadith very carefully. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, My nation, my nation, it's me and you, the ones who say we believe in Prophet Muhammad as the last messenger. He said, My nation will never leave these four things, even after me. And the first thing he says, bragging about the status. Well, we're so good at that. And I'll tell you the irony. I mean, I was speaking to my friend today, and he said that. And then, I don't want anyone to be offended what I'm about to say, but comprehend on what I'm about to say. The, when we were having this chat, I'll give you an example of my country, so I don't, I'm not considered as racist. In my country, one of the biggest complexes that people have is everyone wants to become white? That's the first complex. Alright? What's the second complex? Everyone wants to wear designer clothing? From where? From America? Everyone wants to eat food? Which is again, which is from overseas? And they want to eat all these brands? Or they want to eat all that outside? And why? So they can brag on their st status. The irony is, America always calls Pakistan with those derogatory terms and always say that they're supporting the extremists. Even then, we, as people of Pakistan, and I can vouch for everyone, we swear and we say bad names to America, but at the same time, if you look at us, we're wearing guests, we're eating McDonald's, we're eating KFC. That's the irony. And then what's the second one? Insulting ancestry. And that's what we do, race. My race, you know, look at me, my colour, where I come from. What's the third one? They pray to the stars for rain. Even now, people pray to the stars for rain. And the last one is veiling. I'm not going to go with that, but these are the four things he said, my nation will never leave. And I want to leave you with this final thought. And I actually read this message. This was very powerful. It's amazing what I read. And I want to share it with you. It's actually, a lot of people don't say good things about Robert Mugabe. Robert, Robert Mugabe is the Prime Minister of Zimbabwe. And uh, he actually said this amazing statement in the United Nations a long time ago. And today, after a long search, I found these lines. I want everyone to pay attention to these, exactly to these words, what he says. He says, racism will never end as long as white cars will use black tires. Racism will never end as long as white cars will use black tires. And he says, racism will never end as long as bad symbols are considered to be bad luck. Black symbols are considered to be bad luck and white symbols are considered to be peace. And then he goes on to say, racism will never end as long as you wear black clothes for funeral and white clothes for marriages. And then he goes on to say, this is an amazing one. If you don't play snooker, you probably wouldn't know. He says, racism will never know end until you pot or you sink the black ball and the white ball remains on the top of the table, racism will never end. And then he says this uh, funny statement afterwards in the United Nations. He says, but I am happy as long as the toilet paper is white and I am wiping my backside with it, I am happy. That's what he said. So really, People say profound statements. It's re it really hit home when, he, when I read that. And I want to leave you with that. 
I want to leave everyone with that. Everyone. That start from yourselves. Before you start saying that, oh, look at that white person, or look at that Australian, or look at that European, start from yourself. Make a pledge today to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will stop in your class next time if anyone calls you a name which is other than your name, you'll stop it. And the others will stand up for it. And next time, if in the playground anyone makes fun of someone else's country, you just don't laugh over there. And you say, you know what? Everyone comes from Allah. What's so big deal about that? Why well, make fun of them, even if you're not one of them? You know, when we laugh at something, we encourage them. And it carries on. You know, one day, and it's my own demise, and I, and I apologize publicly. One day, we were sitting in the bus. I'm going with a bunch of students in the same school. And it was a derogatory term. And I actually laughed at it. And then I realized, you know, later on, and I said, you know what, I laughed and I encouraged them. It was like, it was a very derogatory term. It was said, what is Australia Day? And then the other person said, and not naming or shaming anyone, they said, you take all the Aboriginals on a bridge and you throw them out and clean. That's Australia Cleanup Day. So really, I laughed at that and I am I am apologizing publicly, which I shouldn't have done it. But then later on I realized, you know what? I was entertaining that attitude, that conversation. I should have stopped it then and there. Allah ma'athina fi man hadayt. Wa afina fi man a'afayt. Wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Wa barak lana fi ma a'afayt. Wa qina wa sarafa anna bi fadlika sharma ma qadayt. فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يوضى إليك فإنه يذل وهو العيد ولا يعز من عاديت تبارك ربنا وتعاليت لا من جمنك إلا إليك لك الحمد على ما قضيت نستغفرك اللهم ونتوب إليك اللهم اغفر لنا وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات ومنهم الأحياء والعموات اللهم عنصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عنصر جماعة المواحدين يا رب العالمين اللهم ثبت قلوبنا اللهم ثبت أقدامنا يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا رب العالمين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا عاتنا في الدنيا حسنة وقنا عذاب النار أقيم السلام